cooking, 1944 to 2015. As a local artist, craftsman, draftsman, stonemason and mud brick home builder. This is a retrospective of his paintings, life drawings and architectural talent. And is a celebration of his life. Yeah, Hartwell. Hartwell I was born, which um, just down from east of Camberwell. And of course that was all... Um, it was in the days of your bread carts and your milk carts. Totally different days. I mean, it's all just flown so quickly, really. The, the change, like, you know, the old copper for, for washing your clothes in and stirring with a stick, you know, so just so totally different to now. So in 1972, Davis, David Wallace went up to Castlemaine to learn how to build from Bruce Davidson and Emil yep. Far. And it was there that you found around 52 acres. Yeah, 95 bucks an acre in those days. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, the locals thought we were idiots. <laughs> so it's not worth oh, you're 50. Too much. <laughs> much too much. We said that's all right. You know? <laughs> Mind you, it still took 20 years to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> So over several beers at the Albion in Carlton, mm. Cookie, Ernst, John Pace and their partners at the time decided to go into partnership to buy the block. Uh, the Carlton scene was the start of a lot of movements out of Melbourne, out of the rat race. And that's where we met a lot of different builders there and, and um, that was the start of, of David and... Ernst and myself and a few other people buying this land here on the tenants in common title um, and so that was that basically was the start of the move out of Melbourne and in those days you could buy a tenants in common title which meant that we could band together a, a group of people um, to, to buy land cheaply but a few of us would go around the city to all the buildings that were being knocked down, the houses that were being pulled down, and collect building materials, scrounge and, and buy whatever was cheap and cart it up here to Castlemaine, um, up the highway on a, on a little truck we'd bought, masses of timbers and windows, lead light windows, and and roofing material, all sorts of stuff. Railway carriages at um, Bendigo Goods Yards for $400 for a railway carriage that had been involved in an accident somewhere, fallen off the rails or something or other. For $1,200 I got it carted down here on an extendable trailer, two 20-tonne cranes, on either end, lifting it round the bends and curves to get it up on site here. Um, yeah, so that actually started me here living before and, and then I started uh, the additions onto the carriage. Tony went to Paran Tech in the early 60s, which was then a two-year advertising art course, and you had to go on to Melbourne Tech afterwards to finish a four-year art course, but he only completed the third year. For most of you, this is the first time you've seen his work. He, he did it in private, and it was his private self that created this. And I think that's partly why he found it too hard of an idea to have a show. Um, he loved going to other people's shows, but couldn't imagine going to his own. What did you like to paint? Uh, the bush was inspirational, the sky, the clouds. Um, um, I, I even um, started on a project of uh, doing folding screens, which I used to get these very light um, 
timber panel screens made up um, in Bendigo and but smaller than door size and um, yeah three panels and uh, paint them up. It's good painting on timber sometimes rather than canvas. Like this on the wall? Yeah yeah, yeah. well it, um, a lot of people sort of think painting on timber is, is secondary or but you can paint on anything really it doesn't matter. No the folding screens they were great I, I used to love and anything would be an inspiration. Uh, I think one of the early ones was was just the different phases of of this bush here, like autumn, spring, winter. No, it's um, not so much not so much human interest, but but um, sometimes with humans involved. But movement was a very big part of my painting because basically abstract anyway. Tony was a great supporter of local artists. Almost every show he bought some art. He didn't want his own show. I tried to encourage him uh, many times, but he left that for me in his will <laughs> to have a show once he was gone. The large paintings were inspired by Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. He said he was listening to the radio and it came on one night and he started dancing to it and started painting. And that was what inspired these two and the one out there. Yes, which evoked what he felt was the vitality of music. He wrote, I loved the music that my body wanted to move, to dance with abandon. Yes, spring has sprung. I would turn the volume up and dance with rhythm and joy in my heart and mind.